All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Evernest Real Estate Investor Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Spencer Sutton, and I have today with me, Gray Hall. Gray, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Excited to be here. We missed, I think, or no, last week was a short one, kind of market update. So excited to dig into a market this week. Yeah, I know. We've got a lot of new markets coming online uh, here at Evernest. We're uh, we've opened up um, Kansas City, which is what we're going to talk about today with our guest. Uh, we've got Orlando, Tampa. I mean, there's just a lot of a lot of really great things happening. So, yeah, all right. it's exciting. I mean, it's as we grow the footprint and we can continue to provide kind of content, boots in the ground content from what investors can expect from both the property management and the investor side, uh, just as well as like building out our footprint. If you're looking to build a portfolio, uh, we're we're trying to set up shop in kind of the hottest SFR markets. And so we're excited to, to be able to help kind of provide some content and hopefully get investors into some of these houses. Yeah. So I'm excited to talk about Kansas city today. I, um, I want to introduce our guest. We have Amanda Lozano with us. So Amanda, welcome to the show. Thank you. All right. Now, Amanda, where you're, you're in Kansas city right now. And, uh, Amanda is our team leader up there on our property management side. So, uh, she's in charge of our portfolio that we're managing there. Amanda, tell us a little bit about you. Tell us a little bit about how you got in the business. Well, I've been in property management for about 20 years. Um, I'm not as old as I sound, but Um, No, uh, we moved here after Hurricane Katrina from the Gulf Coast, and we've called Kansas City home ever since. We love Kansas City, would never go back. Um, 20 20 years in property management, it's kind of like dog years. We call like one is actually like seven. (laughs) No, it's uh, really like 20. (laughs) I was about to say, when you're in property management, you feel every one of those 20 years as well. So Pretty much it's the only job I've ever done. You either like it or you don't, and I love it. Um, but yeah, Kansas city, just, it just welcomed us and we just grew roots here and it's got anything you could ever want. So what do you, what what do you love about Kansas city? I love the people in Kansas city. I love the sports teams, even though I'm not big into sports. I think when the games are on, we've got the Royals who won the world series. We've got the Kansas city chiefs who've won the super bowl. Now we've got a big soccer team. So even though I'm not really into sports, the whole community gets, comes together and parties. And it's just like a big sense of community. So it's just, it's a nice place to live. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Well, good. Well, let's get right into this. Gray, where do you want to, where do you want to start? I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking about like for investors who are listening to this Yeah. and Amanda, you talk to investors all the time, right? So we're managing their properties. You've been doing this for 20 years. What is it that investors really love about uh, Kansas City? I know what you love, but what do investors love? Well, the market has always been really good in Kansas City. Um, I think you get a lot of bang for your buck. There's a lot of suburbs around Kansas City. Um, There's certain areas in Kansas City you can also get a good value for your money on a rental home. And you can get pretty, pretty good competitive rental rates. Um, people would rather, I've worked in both multifamily and single family, and people do prefer single family over multifamily. So when we get a single family house, just a small three bed, two bath or, or three bedroom, one bath, they go right away. Um, so I think there's just a lot for them to choose from, from all the neighboring suburbs. Um, That's and it's definitely, it's been, a good place to invest. Has it always been like that or has that shift from multifamily to single family preference come up in the last, you know, say two years, we nationally have seen the shift from increased demand, both on the buying side for homeowners to move to single families, as well as on the leasing side, like our single family portfolio have just like rented extremely quickly. So has that always been the case in Kansas city or has that been a shift due to COVID people wanting more space, et cetera? I'm not really sure, but when I was in multifamily, I would get a lot of calls or I would hear of a lot of people looking for single family or townhomes or duplexes, not really in apartments. And we didn't have that to offer. And that's really what they were looking for. So I think it's been consistent. Um, I, I didn't really have a lot of experience in it at that time, but I think if when you're paying the same amount for a single, I mean, apartments are expensive. And so when you can pay the same for your own home as an apartment, I think that's always going to take the cake. Yeah. hundred percent. And it's a pretty big city. I think I was surprised. I think I looked at the MSA and it's about 
2 million. Um, it's I don't it's know. a very big city. Yeah. I think I've driven through there before. I, I don't know why I thought it was smaller than it was, but um, have you felt kind of that growth being there over the past, you know, 10 or 15 years? Cause that's one thing that investors look for is they want a market that's on the up and up. They want companies to be moving there. They want jobs to be growing. All of that is good for both rental rates and home price appreciation. So yes. have you seen that over the past you know, 10 or 15 years? Yes, it's definitely grown. Um, so we have an international airport, but you know it's, it was pretty small and they're, they've totally redone it. And I think it'll be complete next year, which will be a big hub, um, which I think will um, bring even more people, more investors, more people and in traffic into the area. Um, we've seen a lot of new companies open. Um, what are some of the biggest employers there in, in Kansas City? So we've got Cerner, um, we've got Sprint. Um, there's, let's see here. Mm, there's so many. Uh, we've got a lot of different hospitals, Children's Mercy Hospital. We've got one yeah, of the most uh, right. people drive to get here just for that, you know? So there's a lot of specialty things that we have that, you know, if you live here, I mean, it's just a draw to the city. Well, fun fact, uh, anybody here like Twinkies? <laughs> the interstate bakeries is headquartered in Kansas city. So, uh, Hey, my mom used to put Twinkies in my lunch all the time when I was growing up. <laughs> Another one there that's there's, uh, that kind of surprises me is Garmin. Um, so I think Garmin watches GPS. Oh, really? Garmin's up yeah. based out of there. Okay. I knew yeah. Honeywell yes. was. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and a, a lot of population growth. I mean, some of the stuff that I was looking at, uh, population's grown, you know, 25% over the past, I think 10 years. And so, Consistent steady growth is what investors want to look for because you don't want to buy a house in a market that is declining. You got less demand in the future. So yeah, it's definitely uh, not yeah. declining. It's increasing and growing. Um, and it has been really since I've lived here. Yeah. All I think uh, Patrick Mahomes, right? Yes. We like have Patrick Mahomes. Person growth, you know, when you, when you, he went lives here. <laughs> yeah. That, I was, I was thinking about Kansas City. And I'm like, you know, it's really, it, it's a lot bigger than, say, Birmingham, but a lot like Birmingham, you have all kind of different types of properties to buy in Kansas city. So you can go kind of low to moderate income and mm -hmm. look for, look for more cash flow uh, versus you can kind of choose some of your CB property neighborhoods and look for more appreciation. So I just imagine it's really, really diverse. Yes. Um, especially, so we've got suburbs that are close on the Kansas side um, and those are going to be a little more expensive homes. They're going to appreciate a little bit more. Um, they'll bring in a higher rent. You, there's definitely is the renter for that side. So it really depends on the Missouri side. It's going to be a little bit more affordable on the investor, a little more affordable on the rent. Yeah. And it's always been typically it's the way that investors have talked about it, like a yield market. So when a lot of people are looking at the Midwest, Mm -hmm. um, the reason they went there is lower purchase prices and a better kind of rent to uh, home price, which is kind of what you're hitting on there. I think we'll look at some of these uh, markets, but I was just looking at some average data. I think it's kind of good to set contacts. And so like, median home values are you know, about $200,000. Uh, and then median rent for a three bedroom home is about you know $1,400. And so anytime that you can, you know, that's probably about what we're seeing as average. Now, having local knowledge, you can know where you can get a little bit higher on the median, a little bit lower on the purchase price where things that you can do. Uh, but it kind of helps set the stage just in frame of reference. If you're sitting in Denver or California and, you know, 650, 750, uh, is a normal house price. Um, you know, we're, we're more in like the two to, you know, 150 to 300 range in Kansas city. Right. Yeah. So still very affordable. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, do we want to look at some, uh, some areas? I know Amanda, the, the we were talking before this and you had kind of picked out or singled out three areas that you've seen, um, you know, investors kind of favor. So why don't we, why don't we walk through some of these and you tell us a little bit about them? Yeah. So I think you've got pulled up Overland park. Um, mm -hmm. Overland park is one of the suburbs in Johnson County, Kansas. So there's a few Lenexa, Olathe, um, those are on the Kansas side and those are going to be the um, higher purchase price, you know, the engineers um, from Cerner, Garmin, all of that, that are going to be renting those homes. So just if that's what you're looking for, they're like number one school district, Blue Valley School mm -hmm. District. Um, and they definitely will appreciate. They're always going to appreciate. These are the that's houses here in Overland? Yes, in Overland yep. Park and those surrounding uh, Lenox, um, Olathe, just that whole Johnson County area of Kansas. Mm-hmm. 
you will pay so more are, for the house. You, you'll get a lot more for the rent. Yeah. So I, I, it sounds like a, you know, maybe a class type property. Are these newer it, properties? What, uh, yeah. you know, what's they're kind of newer the or right. in more established neighborhoods with HOAs, yeah. um, you know, gotcha. and that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. But, Good but fantastic. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's like a huge selling point for a lot of investors. I, I know some that they're like, we want the best schools and they're, you yeah, know, we know we're going to get a little bit lower yield because the home price is going to be more, but their thesis is over the long run, they think that's going to be a better performing asset with kind of an maybe easier renter, maybe less delinquency, et cetera, maybe a little bit more turnover, but that's kind of what it sounds like you'd find in here. Um, yeah. Any, and it, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Any idea on like average uh, rental price, like a, you know, what's kind of the typical home there is like a three, two, two. Well, it depends. Last summer um, we had 21 townhomes um, that were about three years old. And I sold those to an investor occupied and I sold them for 285. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a couple of vacant people were fighting over them. I mean, um, so the rents were about 2,200 a month. And I'm pretty sure most of the um, renters were engineers. Um, you know, I mean, just they have higher incomes. They can afford the higher rents. Um, so... Yeah. So they, they, they sold super fast and tenants seem to stay longer. Are there any kind of pockets that you like? So this is a, you know, a little bit bigger area. Um, if you're an investor, you know, looking for the A-class house kind of in the good school system, are there any sub pockets in here that we could have investors kind of look into? Um, so I would say um, there is an area that is pretty undeveloped, but is actually about to be very developed. So they could probably pick something up um, cheaper than they would be able to in three years. And that's yeah. going to be at like highway 69 and 135th street. So Southern, Southern Overland park. Um, I'm trying to see, it's going to be, yeah, it's called, it's area. called the blue Hawk area. And that's where those townhomes were. So there's a huge sports complex going up across, um, right there and brand new retail was built there. So I think that area is about to explode. Um, and there's not a whole lot there right now. So if you get in now, mm -hmm. you might get a lot of appreciation. Yeah. Path of growth is really important. I mean, it's like even just mm -hmm. driving around these markets, you can kind of see some of this, um, like Chattanooga is always burned into my mind. Like this, there's this one pocket, at, like I went five years ago and it was farmland three years ago. There's like all of a sudden the target and all this kind of new subdivision stuff. So anytime you can get, get the path of where things are growing from, um, yep. is, yeah, it's a it's a gamble, but if you kind of like know that some of those developments are coming, that's a good way if you're in it for you know a ten year hold to hopefully put yourself in a good chance to see some appreciation there. Yep, definitely. And, so and residents like Overland living Park. next to they like living next to retail, and if there's amenities like that that you think tenants will be attractive, um, whether it's walkable or kind of a close drive, those are always yeah. good things to be looking at. Good highway access, lots of restaurants, that kind of stuff. Cool. Um, and then the next area. So uh, talk about Gladstone. So Gladstone um, is what we call north of the river. I live north of the river. Um, and it's just, um, it's kind of the older, um, like in Gladstone, Missouri, you can get a little bit of an older home um, that's going to be more middle class. You know, you'll pay less than what you would pay like in Overland Park, Kansas. They'll rent very quickly because they're going to be priced for, you know, families or, or whoever, but they're, they're very reasonably priced. So you can usually scoop a house up in Gladstone, um, Missouri or North Canton. I wouldn't say anything up North of the river is good in my opinion. Um, really? But yeah. Is that kind of like a, a defining line in the city? It kind of is. is. Like directional or? Um, north of the river is just very, um, I can't say there's, you know, no crime there or anything like that, but it's just a very quiet area. Um, if you scroll to the left, there's Parkville up north. Um, that's going to be more like an Overland Park area. So you're going to pay a lot for a house in Parkville. Mm -hmm. um, but if so you're wanting, if, I'm sorry. I was going to say, for those of you who are listening on the podcast, not watching the YouTube video, this is, uh, a we're, we're like Park, Parkville is a little bit northwest um, yeah. Of the city. So there's, there's some higher end neighborhoods up North, but there's also quite a bit, especially, like I said, Gladstone, you're going to get, you know, you can get a house for $140,000, three bed, two bath, two car garage, you know, just and, uh, nothing fancy, but 
And it'll rent for about how much? You know, I, it really, it really depends. Um, depends on, you know, if it's been remodeled at all or anything like that, but I would say, you know, you could probably get $1,600 depending on if it's got good square footage, if it's a small two bed, one bath, you know, it may be more like 1200. Um, but those houses get scooped up in a minute, Yeah, even on the sales side. Yeah. Sounds like a great area. Yeah, it is. It really is. It's a good place to live too. I mean, the schools, the schools are, like um, the schools are going to be North Kansas city school district. And I, I'm not sure where they're rated, but they're, they're really a good school district. Yeah. Love it. Um, and then talk about independence. So independence, um, I'm a little newer to the independence area, but just from what I've seen, um, it's kind of the same thing as Gladstone. You get, um, you know, a little bit more of a simple house, more bang for your buck, and you have immediate re- immediate renters. Um, people like independence. Um, they can afford independence. And there's a lot of rental properties. Um, there's some fourplexes and duplexes and small single family houses. So they just tend to be a little bit older. Um and so if you're looking to scoop up a lot of real estate, that's probably a good place to do it. Really? Are a lot of these, like, does, it, does this range from like 1900 or are these like 1960s properties? Like how old are or some of them? Oh, no, I would say probably like 1960s. So they're not like historical. They're just more ranch style split. Um, mm. you know. Those are great. Those are great houses. <laughs> they are. Yeah. 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 Those are great houses. Great rental houses for sure. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at, yeah yeah so kind of a good suburb on the east side uh of kansas if you're not uh watching the youtube video if you're watching the youtube video we're sharing the screen and kind of going through just to give context about where in the city that we're talking about um yeah. this looks kind of far out on the map I and mean, you've got some kind of farmland area is the city growing kind of in this direction you know talk about kind of like where the city's growing just you know holistically like are there so, new developments and, and the edges of these? I've, I've seen that be a strategy for newer investors or for investors is buying newer properties. And typically where the land is available is like on the outside of city. So are you seeing some of these new build communities pop up? Do you think that's a, a good strategy for investors? Um, I really haven't seen that. That doesn't mean that that isn't happening. Um, I just haven't seen that. And I know you said it sound, it looks kind of far away, but it, it's really not. It's about 10 minutes to downtown Kansas city. 10, 15 minutes. Um, I, was, I, was re- I was reading somewhere and it was like the, the average commute is less than 25 minutes anywhere you go in oh, Kansas yeah. city. Yeah. So it looks, is, I mean, all awesome. these suburbs, we say Kansas city, but you're really like 20 minutes from Kansas city. So, um, and yeah. Talk about, um, renting as a whole kind of, you know, in the leasing season right now, you're saying things are flat the shelf. Do you have any context? Like, days on market, what would an investor expect once they find the right house, you know, get it fixed up to market? How quickly are these things, you know, how long are they taking a rent? Um, so just long enough for us to screen people. So uh, <laughs> we don't even pre-lease right now because our market is so hot. People you can't get into the house during the rehab. So they're, they're upset by that. So as soon as it hits the market, we usually have five to 10 applicants that are applying at one time. Um, and the wow. first applicant that's qualified and, and they're calling, they want to give you money. I mean, it's, it's basically zero days on market. I think on our report, it showed two days, two days wow. on market. Probably need to push some rents up if, if we're getting that many people banging down. <laughs> I, know. Well, say, I, already, I, I already did. I pushed the rent up 200 from what the previous person was paying. And then I thought, shoot, I should have pushed it up even more. Wow. Well, hey, it's a process right there, but now we know the next stuff coming up. Um, I mean, I saw some data that Kansas city rents have grown, you know, 30%. Over the past mm-hmm. two years, we've kind of seen this this rapid growth. The question will be, can it continue? It sounds like right. the party is still going on in Kansas right now for uh, for renters. Yeah. Well, and the apartment rents are high too. So like I said, you can choose. Of course, you're going to choose a house. I mean, I would. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are there any differences between you know, Missouri side and Kansas side? Uh, I think it's kind of an interesting city that it's split, you know, right down the middle, uh, straddling two different states. So any differences, pitfalls, maybe like laws and regulations in the two different states, are they very kind of similar? Um, so um, it is pretty split. So it's Kansas City, Missouri, and then there's Kansas City, Kansas. Um, Kansas City, Kansas, I don't have much. I, 
haven't heard a whole lot of wonderful things about Kansas City, Kansas. Um, Kansas City, Missouri is where all the uh, the venues are and all that. Uh, the Kansas side tends to be more high priced. Um, so, you know, they're just going to be newer homes or more established neighborhoods. And then the Missouri side, you've got it all. You've got those neighborhoods. If you're wanting that, you've got middle-class neighborhoods, you've got historical homes in Southern Kansas City, Missouri, if you'd like um, as a historical like 1900 um, architecture, we've got that. Um, so the rule of thumb is pretty much Kansas is, you know, super expensive and Missouri is more affordable. Interesting. Um, yeah. And I wonder if that's just newer stuff over here, because uh, it looks like the, uh, the kind of downtown where Kansas started and as it kind of expanded, started on the Missouri side, but that's that's interesting. So most investors are kind of focused on the Missouri side. Yeah, I've seen definitely more rentals on the on the Missouri side because you're going to scoop up more real estate um, for sure. Interesting. Okay, very cool. Um, and overall, why would an investor come to Kansas City? Why would you not come to Kansas City? No, I, I love Kansas City. Um, I'm actually thinking of purchasing my first rental home and I would purchase um, in Kansas City. I would probably purchase in Gladstone um, just because I live up north. But I just think you're always going to have a renter via, via they like sports. They know someone that likes sports. They like venues. They like a large airport, um, top school districts lots of entertainment, um, pretty good cost of living in Kansas city. Um, and just yeah, a nice, below the median, below the median average. I think the median yeah, average. And that's what I noticed like, moving from the Gulf coast, the, the cost of living here is not bad at all. Yeah. 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 yeah anywhere below that, you know, 350 or 400 mark, I think it's up to right now. Um, yeah. being on the lower end. Yeah. So it's cheaper to live there. Um, and if the rents continue to kind of stay where they're at, I think there should be still some yield left in the Kansas city market. It sounds like it's still got some legs to run. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I honestly do love Kansas city and, and I, I think it's a great rental market and it is a great place to put your money for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, Amanda, you've done a great job for your very first podcast. Well, thank <laughs> <Like> you. <laughs> we, we appreciate you being here and sharing your expert expertise on Kansas city. So, uh, Gray, anything you want to say as we close up? No, I'm excited for all these new markets. Uh, you know, we get to learn about these from you know people yeah. who live there on the ground, trying to bring that content to you. So this is this has been fun to uh, to get to know the Twin Keys, Patrick Mahomes, and uh, to look on the Missouri side of Kansas. So I appreciate you sharing your insight with us. Yeah, awesome. All right, everybody, if you haven't already, go ahead and leave us a review on Apple iTunes. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, we'll be back next week with another episode of the Everness Real Estate Investor Podcast. Hey.